Today we're going to see attacks on operational technology like SCADA hacking by attacking Modbus TCP protocol. Before we move on with the attack, let us get a brief idea about operational technology and this attack type. Operational technology. It's a combination of hardware and software that monitors and controls physical devices in industries. One of the examples of operational technology is ICS. It's called Industrial Control System. It's a collection of devices, programs and networks to manage industrial infrastructure process, such as transportation of oil and gas in pipelines, daily operations in power plants, road, railway and air traffic control, diagnosis of faults in machines used in industries. Some of the types of ICS are SCADA, RTU, PLC and HMI. Let us understand the relation between these and their use. So let's say we have different industrial systems like water pump, elevator, thermostat, centrifuge. And here we have RTU and PLCs, which is used to control and monitor these systems. RTUs and PLCs are controlled by a centralized controller called SCADA. Now an operator can directly interact with the SCADA or he can use an HMI, which is called human machine interface to interact with the SCADA. HMI can also work independently to interact with the RTUs and PLCs. The communication between the SCADA and RTU or PLC can happen by using different communication protocol. One of the example is Modbus protocol. There are two types are there, Modbus RTU which use the serial communication and Modbus TCP which use the TCP IP. Now in this protocol, the SCADA is called as a master and these controlling devices are called as slave. Here the master can perform the read and write operation on the slave. It works on the port 502. Now if in this network there is a malicious user or attacker, he can perform different attacks. Like he can sniff the traffic between the SCADA and these controlling device by using the tool like Wireshark and can perform the replay attack. Now these PLCs and RTUs have a memory which is stored a temporary data. Now the attacker can spoof as a master device and performs the read-write operation on the memories of these devices. Now let us see the lab setup for our attack. For the lab setup we are using VMware. In that we are running Kali as attacker machine and Ubuntu as a target. In Ubuntu we are going to run a slave device. For that we are going to use a simulation tool that's called Modbus Pal. We can download it from this site. Once it is downloaded, Open the terminal and go to the download directory. Here we can see that we have a jar file. Now we can start this jar file by giving the following command. Now in this window, we're going to create a slave device. So go to this add option. Here we can give a slave ID. A slave ID can be 12255 five. that means a master can have up to 255 slaves now here we can give some name once it is done click on add now here we can see that our slave has been added now let us edit this here we can see that our slave have memory in that we have registers and coils coils contains a value 0 and 1 which represent on off Whereas holding register can have different values. So you can click on the add. Here we can have register up to 65,536. So let us add 10 registers. Now in this, let us add some values. So here we have added some values to these registers. Now click on the run. So our slave device is started. Now let us go back to the attacker machine. In here, let us scan for our subnet and look for the port 502. So for that, we go to use nmap. So with this command, we are scanning this whole subnet and looking for the IP which having this port 502 open, which might be our target slave. Now in the result, we can see that .12 IP having port 502 open. Now let us attack this. For this, we go to use Metasploit framework. So we can start the Metasploit framework by giving the command msf console. In this, we can search for the modules related to mode bus by using the search command. Here we can see that we have multiple modules and there are auxiliary modules. So here we have the module find unit ID. That is the slave IDs. By default, the first ID is one. And here is the mode bus client. This is used to attack as a master and to give the read write operation on the target slave. So let us use this one. To use that, we use the following command. Now in this module, we can see what are the options are there by using the command show options. So we can see that these are the parameters that we can set. 
and let us see what are the tasks we can perform by using the commands show actions. So these are the tasks that we can perform. So let us perform the read operation. For that we're going to use read holding register action. So we can give the following command. After setting this action, we're going to set the data address that we want to read. So let us give the data address 2. So you want to read the second register. Now let us set the target IP. Now we can simply give the command run. So here we can see that the second register have the value 6587. Let us check this. Here you can see that 6587. Now by default, the address starts from the 0. Now in this simulator, it is starting from the 1. That's why we are getting the reading for the third register, 36587. Now let us change this. To perform the change, we are going to use different action, that is write register. Now after setting the write action, let us set the data address. Now we need to set the data that you want to write in this register. So for that we are going to use set data. And let us give some other value. Now let us give the run. So here we can see that this value has been written. Now let us check it. Let's go back to Ubuntu. Here we can see that the value has been changed by double four double four. So by using this attack, the attacker can change these values. Now these values perform a critical task. So if any change made in these values, it can cause a major problem on the target system. So that's all for today. See you next time.